And we've certainly got a fine opening match here from these two players. Just 12 minutes gone and neither man looking particularly in trouble. You can see that audacious eyeballing that the Ukrainian, Roman Solovka, is giving Yuri Uzliam of Russia on the right there. But Uzliam is putting up a brilliant defence. Very tight, very solid. <laughs> If you've just joined us, you're watching the 43rd World Stare Out Championship Finals. <laughs> David Joyce is with me, as usual, in the commentary box. Solovka looks impenetrable, doesn't he, David? Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, he looks like a man in form. And I, and I have to say, John, when I saw that this was the opening fixture of this year's championships, I thought, great. Because you can, you can see them there. They're both concentrating to a fantastic standard. Wonderful staring. And we talk about the ability of the top-level players to stare, and by golly, both these men are working hard out there. Pressure on these players is enormous. One blink, and it's all over. <laughs> of course, whenever these two meet, we're reminded of that unforgettable struggle in the final of 1968, the amateur championship. Yes. The game lasted nine hours before right. Uzlian <laughs> wore out Solovka. We can see a snatch of that. And what a <laughs> super match we've been treated to here by these two Eastern Bloc players. I remember the last time they met was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And it was such an absorbing game that it certainly took my mind off that confrontation between the superpowers. <laughs> and I really don't think I can recall such tension. The atmosphere here, absolutely electric. Marvellous stamina from these two players. Oh, my gosh! Solovka has blinked! It's all over! What a terrific performance from the Russian! Absolutely outstanding! <laughs> Lovely to hear Raymond Sledge's commentary there, too. The voice of stare out for so many years. Both players biding their time here, both waiting to exploit the first chink in their opponent's defence. Usliam hasn't budged one inch. Impassive. Oh, I say, that's something we don't expect to see at steering. A real attention seeker trying to steal the headlines from the serious business of steering. It's extraordinary, that was. Absolutely extraordinary. But just look at the concentration on the players' faces. I mean, pure professionalism. Oh, not a flicker. Not a flicker. There was a fella standing there um, with his... Uh, <laughs> what can you call it? Uh, hanging out and... Uh, and they didn't, they didn't budge an inch. Talking to the boys, you've got to say the boys in blue, the police acted very promptly. And that's yeah. the last uh, that spectator will see of this match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doubt this pop up on a, what happened next in some sports programme. Extraordinary stuff. Well, here we are. It's Ted Stead against Sid Harther. If you've just joined us, you're watching the 43rd World Stare Out Championship Finals. Harther there, the uh, grasshopper. Good to see him back, David. Yes, well, I mean, he, he did have that terrible incident with that stray eyelash in the semi-final of the, uh, the Hungarian Invitation event in, uh, in Budapest. Um, to have that happen, uh, an eyelash digging into the retina two minutes into the game, I mean... Amazingly, he, he still won. It was a great display of staring. Yes, uh, Les Spencer, his opponent, just didn't know what to do. Well, if you've tuned in to watch uh, Changing Rooms, let me tell you that that will follow immediately after our extended coverage. <laughs> Let's just look at uh, Ted, the head, Stead. Wayward boy of American stair mastery, they say. He's quite a boy. Stead knocking on Harthur's door, but can he get in? Mm, well, you need very big knockers for that, John. <laughs> Mm. <coughs> well, Stead, Stead. <laughs> um, yes, Stead. Um, <laughs> st <coughs> uh, this is a this is a massive. Um, <laughs> this is a massive test for me, Stead. <laughs> Spot of, of um, hilarity breaking in the commentary box. I really do apologise. 
sorry. <laughs> and we can go over now to the match on court three, where we have the young amateur from Mexico who's done so well in this tournament, Arturo Jimenez. There he is on the left. The first Mexican to take the gold at last year's Olympics, which really put Mexico on the staring map. And he seems very much in control of this match against the Latvian, Ludek Mintz. Mm, well, it won't be easy, John. Um, Ludek there, he's always a tough nut to crack. And literally. Mm, <laughs> yes. Well, here comes the stair break, a feature very much associated with the amateur game. Of course, there are no stair breaks allowed in the professional game. Um, the, uh, the stair break very much a safety aspect of the amateur game, as is um, staring indoors. Uh, you may remember the controversy last year when three amateur starers went blind whilst staring outdoors on a sunny day. Yes, I always say to the young kids out there, David, please do enjoy your staring, but it's important to be aware of the risk symbol. Well, what a delicately poised match we have here. The first four hours are really zipped by. <laughs> so far, both masters haven't given an inch, but there's a keen anticipation that there's an attack lurking somewhere in the pipeline. But which player would it come from? It's absolutely neck and neck here, and that makes for fantastic viewing. Oh, good game, this one. Oh, Richard Gere among the uh, crowd today. <laughs> Now this, as they say, is the big one. Benny Kayang against Leonard Hultz. If you've just joined us, you're watching the 43rd World Stare Out Championship Finals. <laughs> Leonard Hultz, he's such a natural talent and incredible to think he won't be 18 until May. And this uh, massive crowd which has turned out today, well, the majority, you have to say, are here to see the youngster from Chesterfield. Um, yes, uh, you've got to feel slightly sorry for the German. Um, I would say almost everyone here wants to see Leonard win and go on to the final. And he has his lucky panda, Dee Dee, with him today. And lots of girls in the crowd with their little pandas too. I read somewhere that his fan club is now 250,000 members strong. And you get a free panda when you join. I mean, he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a hero to the young, isn't he? He's the sort of man that uh, will get young people looking at staring and saying, yes, I want to stare. <laughs> Let's just take a closer look, David, at the uh, man who's had a street named after him in his native yes. uh, Santiago, doesn't Benny Kayang. Benny Kayang doesn't get much better than that, John, does it? <laughs> uh, how many people can you say have got a street named after him? No, he's a giant. He's a giant of staring. There is a, a slight question mark over his temperament um, because he does tend to um, court controversy and uh, only last year he got involved in an altercation at a petrol station with, um, with somebody over some um, unleaded petrol or something. I don't know what, what the details were, but he hit somebody and uh, quite hard apparently. And uh, the man needed stitches and his, his jewellery wiring. But anyway, uh, Benny's done his time for that. He, um, he actually gave stare-out lessons to street children in Santiago by way of a punishment there. So um, there's a silver lining in every cloud, John. Today's match officials, Ken Todd and Brian Featherhead. I think it's worth mentioning, John, that uh, Kayang is still the holder of the world record for the longest period without blinking. Two days, 10 hours, 56 minutes and 45.89 seconds. Oh, goodness me. A real marathon session, that. Must have been pretty hard to get the edited highlights out of it, too. <laughs> um, but that's actually very different from staring, isn't it? Yes. If you've just joined us, you're watching the 43rd World Stare Out Championship Finals. <laughs> We're all set for Anan Nanak against England's John Duran. It's impossible not to comment on Duran's unusual style. Well, all I can say is that Duran is never an easy draw for any of the favourites. I mean, he's a real battler and... Uh, OK, he may not have as much natural ability as some of the bigger names, but, but who knows what can happen. It's really his tremendous stuff. Well, much has been written about Duran not being taken seriously because of his style, 
and always being in the shadow of Britain's number one, Andrew Dudley. But at 32, Duran is the first Briton to reach this stage of the championship since 1993. He apparently goes out in the town with Danny Baker and uh, Chris Evans and Gaza. I wonder who pays for the first round of drinks in that quarter. <laughs> Interesting variation almost disappeared under the table. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Let's have a look at this. There's the angle, 32 degrees, and he drops. He drops. And that is, well, according to that, 37 degrees. That's quite a drop. That's five degrees. <laughs> well, who says staring isn't exciting? <laughs> Well, there it is. That's what every competitor is uh, staring at, or should I say staring for, the trophy, <laughs> only eight and a half inches high. What wouldn't these two men competing today give to get their hands on it? All the greats have won this trophy at some stage. People like Alan Gambles and Todd Ott Strottengeimer, <laughs> Bing Sharples, yeah. nodding way there, David. Yes. Giggles Clifton. I don't know. I tell you what. Uh, I, I tell you what, John. That, that makes me nostalgic thinking of uh, I mean, Giggles Clifton. Uh, they used to call him the Tall Man. <laughs> Stolen, of course, in 1971, or at least just before the 1971 tournament. Yes. Um, but yes. as everyone knows, uh, it was found under a bush by a dog. But the thing is, do you remember the name <laughs> of that dog? Yes, I do. Uh, the dog's name was Mr. Jobby. <laughs> and, uh, yes, he found it under a uh, under a hedge there. Uh, well thank, done. And thank goodness he did, John. Yeah, absolutely. Thank goodness he did, and where would we be without him? If you've just joined us, you're watching the 43rd World Stare Out Championship Finals. Well, we've been eagerly awaiting this match. Even though it's likely to be a test for the commentators, it's Samuel Wallace against Pippi Popstopoulos. I have to say that this match hasn't quite caught fire yet. Popstopoulos, indeed, doesn't look as though he knows the match has even started. What's going on here, David? I mean, nothing's happening. Oh, I wish I knew, John. It's a pretty miserable encounter. Crowd don't like it one bit, that's for sure. Five, Sensible refereeing from Jacob Microberg, one of today's umpires. <laughs> He's the one on the left there, sitting with uh, John Warren. Mr Microberg acted very promptly, I remember, against Seamus Rafferty in an earlier round. But things got a bit out of hand against Sonny Verts, you remember? Yes. Threatened to become an absolute bloodbath at one stage. Yes. But still, this game refuses to come to life. So at least we've got a rather nice cake in front of us sent by Mrs Anna Murdoch of Grimsby. Thank you very much, Mrs Murdoch. Yes. Very kind of you. Well, now, I mean, this really is a sudden change, isn't it? Quiet beginning, but yeah. suddenly it's coming to life. Oh, we've got a match on our hands here, John, and uh, Chicago now. Uh, Samuel Wallace butchering Popstopoulos there. It's, it's ruthless. Oh! Just look at that. It's frightening. I really wouldn't want to be in Popstopoulos' shoes there. Oh, look at that. That's an amazing oh! reaction. Oh, oh look at that. That's extraordinary stuff it there. It really is quite <laughs> remarkable, this. The way this has suddenly turned around. Now, look at that. He's done it again, John. It's an amazing. He's done it again. <laughs> this is really staring out of the top drawer. <laughs> Well, I think we can describe him as a long-serving official. This contest has been going on for six hours. Such a tight contest, yes. this. What a match, John. Yeah. It's extraordinary stuff, this. Oh, and we have an intruder. Oh, goodness me, this is a real test here what for Pastopoulos. It's, it's, it's a wasp. And not a flicker from him. Look, it's landed on his nose I and he's still not moving. I don't believe it. He hasn't batted an eyelid. And it's right in front of his, his, his staring gaze there and not a flicker. That's extraordinary stuff. And so unfair, but he survives and still stares at his man. Well, here we are. We're all set. It's a capacity crowd. 
And we're ready for the World Championship stare out final. Joining me in the commentary box is David Joyce. Hello, David. Hello, John. Hello, everyone. Got a bet on Campagnoli yet? <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, let's have a look at both these finalists. First, Alessandro Campagnola, seated 14th, and it has to be said a surprise finalist. Not tipped by many to go all the way, but a great run of form brought him to this stage, and no fluke, some big names have fallen to him. Most notably, the number six seed India's Anand Nanak in a classic semi final. <laughs> and uh, his opponent, the defending champion. Well, just look at those statistics. Six times world champion. Hugely impressive. And he's only 32, but he's already among the all time greats of this sport. Yes, uh, some people are very surprised to find out he's only in his early 30s but the concentration required at this level has obviously taken its toll to some extent John he really does eat drink and breathe staring come on Siggy well that's the first idiot of the day no blinking so it remains all square Let's go to the stair cam to see what Campagnola has to deal with. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's a fearsome sight. Just look at the level of concentration in those eyes. Yes. Mm. I'm sure there's a part of the Italian now saying, I've had enough of this. But of course, he can't afford to think like that now. I certainly wouldn't like to be in his place, David. What can Campagnola do to combat this attack? Oh. Well, John, he'll be digging very deep at the moment, calling on all his resources to combat this onslaught from Spassky. <laughs> but having said that, he's, he's holding up very Sorry well. Sorry to interrupt you, John. Yeah. I think Campagnola's starting to sweat. Oh, yes, 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 there yes. it is. The pressure's starting to get to Campagnola oh, oh, oh. after nine minutes. David, just as you were saying how well Campagnola was holding up. Yeah, Spassky's definitely gaining the initiative there, and it will be important for Alessandro to maintain his concentration. He'll know he's behind, but he's a gutsy campaigner, and he's certainly, I would think, will have something left. Yes, there it is. Yes, incredible, David. Mm. Spassky's produced an attack from nowhere when we were least expecting it. Great example for any young player. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not over yet, John. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Campagnola responds. Measures that have gone some of the way to curb this worrying problem of drugs in the game, and I would guess that a lot of... David, I'm going to stop you there. I think we're seeing some developments in the match. Yes. Yes, some head movements from Campagnola. Signs that his challenge is beginning to weaken. He's in trouble. Oh. And Campagnola has started to sweat again. Yes. And I think he'll know he's down. The pressure really now beginning to tell, and Spassky just pummeling Look Campagnola into submission. <laughs> David, is there any way back for Campagnola? He's certainly in trouble, John. He's cracking under the pressure now. Definite head movements, and I really can't see him pulling out of this. He's weakening fast now. He's all over the place. Spassky <laughs> pummeling the Italian into submission. Unrelenting, ruthless aggression from Spassky. He's tearing Campagnola's tattered defences apart. Grinding his man down and showing absolutely no mercy. <laughs> how much longer can this last? Look how ungainly he looks now. He's falling apart piece by piece. You've got to have some sympathy for the man. Credit, of course, must go to Spassky. It's been a real honour to witness such a spectacular match as this. And a real master in Spassky. Such true quality. Will this man ever be beaten? Look at him now. Look at him. He's going down fighting. And the crowd are going wild. There he goes. He's gone. He's gone. Campagnola blinks. And it comes to an end. It's all over. Spassky has retained his world title in masterful fashion. What a classic final this has been.